Now, up to a third of young people will never be able to afford to buy their own houses and will live in private rented accommodation all their lives. That's according to research for the Resolution Foundation Think Tank, who say that 40% of millennials, those born between 1980 and 1996, were living in rented housing by the age of 30. Let's discuss this now. We can talk to Jenny Kovacs, who once owned her own home but is now in rented accommodation, and to John Stewart, who's from the Residential Landlords Association. Thank you both for uh, joining me today on Newsroom Live. Uh, Jenny, let's begin with you. Tell us about your situation. So I you know, lived through my life and bought, in fact, two properties. And then due to my own personal circumstances, a marriage split, I was then in the predicament where I no longer owned a home. And, you know, I really feel for these millennials because five years on, I'm still looking at how I get back on the property ladder. I really don't see how they have an opportunity to do so in their lifetime. And that's really sad. So just give us a sense of the efforts that you have been making to try to get back on the property ladder then, Jenny. So it's interesting because I live in an area of London, which isn't the cheapest of areas of London. So, you you know, you, you try and find a cheaper rent, you know, try and put money away. Uh, and it means that you can sometimes inadvertently degrade your lifestyle to be able to try and put everything, you know, in a property. You go and speak to financial advisors. They tell you that your income needs to be at a certain level. You know, it's, a, it's not the easiest of things to do. And having already experienced owning a property, it, it's a difficult thing to think, is that really that far in the distance for me? John, to you now, John Stewart from the Residential Landlords Association. Uh, I guess you would like people, you know, based on, on the, the, the members of your association and what they say, you would like people to start thinking more about renting as a, as a long-term solution rather than the desire to own a property. Uh, certainly, the, the government at the moment remains committed to promoting home ownership, but we have seen uh, a, a great deal of growth in the private rented sector. Indeed, it's now overtaken social housing as the second largest tenure in the UK. Uh, and our members look to provide safe, secure uh, and legal accommodation to uh, those renting. And people rent privately for a variety of reasons. Uh, some uh, provides flexibility uh, for work or for studies. Uh, for other people, they can afford a better property through renting than they could afford to buy. But of course, there are people for whom affordability is a key issue and simply can't get on that housing ladder. And I do think that we now need to begin to plan for the longer term for more people being in rented accommodation long term and within the private rented sector. But does the private rental sector really give people enough security, especially if they're at the point of uh, point in their lives where perhaps they want to start a family? I think you have to be clear about some of the statistics in the private rented sector. There's only around 10% of tenancies are actually ended by a landlord. Uh, most tenancies are ended by the tenant. And the average uh, tenancy in the sector now lasts for over four years. No landlord wants to get rid of, of a good tenant. Landlords want to keep good tenants long term. Uh, it means they don't have to uh, suffer void periods. It means they know the property is being looked after. So. I think what we need to do is actually remove some of the barriers to landlords offering longer term tenancies. For example, there are still mortgage conditions that prohibit tenancies of uh, more than six or 12 months. Uh, many insurance clauses, leaseholders are often prevented by the freeholder from offering longer term John, tenancies. I'll try to come back to you in a moment if we have time, but I want to go back to Jenny. Um, Jenny, I know in many European nations, long term rentals are much more the thing to do and, and a common way of life. Have you pretty much accepted that that is what you'll be doing or do you still strive and desire no, you know, to, to own a home again? I strive to own a home again, but when you think about the millennials who are really drastically affected by this, it, it, if they go out and have a look at you know, trying to get a mortgage for a property, it almost seems like it's weighted more to the landlords to be able to buy or have more buy-to-let properties than it actually is for the consumer, the person that actually wants to get the mortgage and own their own property. So it, it's sad that you know, the landlords can't rent out these properties for a long period of time. So what, about, you know, what about the millennials? What about the people that are desperately trying to get on the housing ladder? Maybe they've just finished university, they've got, they've got student debt, and they're trying to build their own home and their own future in a way in which they may have even been brought up to aspire to own their own properties. 
the cost of a mortgage or repayment of a mortgage versus the cost of somewhere like this area in London is significantly, um, there's a significant gap. It's a lot more expensive to rent than to get a mortgage. Uh, John, do you think the system is weighted towards private landlords? Uh, not at all. Uh, landlords will typically have to find a deposit of around 30% before they buy a property, whereas for uh, homeowners it's between 5 and 10% at the lower end. Landlords face an additional 3% in stamp duty if they're buying an additional property. And I think we have to be careful uh, not that, to... That all gets passed yeah. on in rent, sir, surely, to, to, the, to the tenants of those landlords? Uh, Obviously, where uh, costs increase, then, then some are passed on to tenants, but landlords are very aware that, um, of affordability. And I think the key driver here uh, that's preventing people from getting home ownership is both access to a mortgage and also, as you've touched on in earlier, earlier articles today, actually wage stagnation uh, and, and incomes haven't been rising by as much uh, as property prices. I think these are, are far bigger barriers to people being able to buy a property than, for example, uh, the, the claim that private landlords uh, uh, are favoured in the housing market. The evidence is simply not there to support that assertion. OK, um, Jenny Kovacs and John Stewart, thank you both very much for talking about that with us.